It's funny because this is actually like a picture. I straight up went up to the board and I took a picture of like exactly what Dr. Spina drew, and I just literally plugged it into the PowerPoint. Um, this makes it so that strength is not a thing. You can't say strength. It's not a. It's just a concept that humans created for the expression of moving something. That's how strong you are. It's just a concept. It doesn't really exist in like in, in matter in science. It's a, strength really it's like a, it's a, it's an emergence it's what it's a it's a consequence of the determinants of strength which are these things inside of here um, all right let me just go over this whole thing so brain sends signal signal comes down your spinal cord through your bones reaches a joint capsule that's the first place that the signal gets sent to and that's the first place to send signals back to your brain it's a two-way street your brain learns information from the outside through your joints, and your, your, and your joints, they, they capture the movements that you're doing outside, and they send your, your brain information how to do them better. Um, so the capsule, which is exactly what we train the most when we do capsule cars, when you guys do capsule cars, like the shoulder capsule car, you're training the ability of the capsule to rotate and send information to your brain. Second part is rotational muscle. That's the why we get to do this. That's why when we train bicep curls, it's not just this, it's this, 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 this. You can rotate your elbow, you can rotate your shoulder, because we have rotational muscles around every single joint, except spine, spine. Your spine is all layer, <laughs> at first. Um, so, that's the second layer of training, should be your rotational muscles. So it goes capsule, rotational muscles. Third layer of training, those are your linear muscles. Those are the muscles that are responsible for linear movements, which again is the bicep curl. The difference is these muscles, the ones the second layer, they're responsible for this. These are responsible for this motion in every single one of these ranges of motion. So they move you linearly, but they still have many degrees of rotation in them, which where most people are obviously not training because they don't train many degrees. They try, they try to with variations, but let's be real, it's pretty hard to accommodate for all variations of all lifts all the time ever forever, like it doesn't exist. Uh, and the most interesting part, and this is kind of like the, the, the shocking part, every single one of these layers has one layer of communication in between each one of them, and you can train that too. They communicate with each other. And that, that's what create all these things combined create one single movement pattern that you call strength. That's kind of how that works. So, um, another thing that the strength model doesn't take very good account into is the concept of entropy. Joey, you probably know what entropy is. Yeah, when the muscle shrinks. Uh, so entropy is a very broad concept that can be applied to many systems. It's pretty much when the system is losing energy and going into disorder. And that can be any system ever in the physical realm. It just happens to apply to our body when we start deteriorating. That's what getting old is, is entropy. And you start, things just start deteriorating when you don't use them, when they lose energy. That's why movement helps, because movement you're producing energy. Um, so yeah, that also a failure of the standard model is not accounting for that, and obviously a great way to do that is by training the things that go and train, which is training your, your joints and your ligaments and your legs and tissue, stuff like that. What the internal strength model did is create one input for each and every single one of all these layers. So that's how training goes. We're going to train exactly how the body sees itself, how your brain sees itself. Remember, the brain can't see the outside world. It, can know, it knows how to move through the outside world, through your joints and through other afferent signals that come from the rest of your tissues and, and even like your, obviously your, your five senses. Uh, so much so that if you put, if you, if you got a bunch of babies that didn't know how to walk and you put them all on an island, on the beach, somewhere outside of contact with any other civilization and you come back 50 years later, they would all be walking because that's the way that humans learn how to do most efficient movement patterns. We don't learn how to walk by watching other people walk. We learn how to walk because that's the quickest way for us to get places. Apply the same concept to a squat. You don't learn how to squat because of looking at someone squatting. You don't learn how to squat because of the cues someone coach, some coach gives you. You learn how to squat because the way you learn how to squat is because you, you, that is the best way your body found to complete the movement at hand. Same thing applies to overhead press, bench, deadlift, whatever. Cool. So, we're going to go over all the inputs. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. You see the black lines, black and red. Black lines are connective tissue. Red lines are muscle tissue. In between each and every single one of your muscle cells, and your anatomy books won't show this, you will think that the uh, connective tissue only happens here and here to attach the bone to muscle. It doesn't. It's in between each and every single one of the fibers, including the linear fibers and the rotational fibers. 
And so by you training your connective tissue and making them inside of you stronger, literally inside your, in the middle of your muscle fibers, they can produce more force, which means you get stronger. Whenever they pull, whenever the, your muscles tuck, the, the, your muscles they're kind of attached to the connective tissue like this, pretend there's a connective tissue here in the middle. Whenever you produce a lot of speed, they pull on it. And that's why speed training is the more advanced part of connective tissue training. You guys haven't done a lot of that yet. But you guys, I hope you guys will, specifically for dynamic effort. I think that'd be, that'd be great. Um, cool, so I'm just gonna go over all the inputs. Input zero, that's what they called it. A fair and efferent flow, that's the communication between each and every single one of the layers. The green stuff, oh, oh I'm gonna go back here. This is, the, this is what that looks like. Green, communication, training capsule, more communication, train rotational, more communication, train linear, more communication, and then practice your movement. Again, following this order. Uh, for you to train the communication, the more, the slower you go in the movement pattern, the more information is transferred from your joints to your brain. So let's say, for example, I'm doing an uh, elbow car. If I do it like this, there's not a lot of communication. If I do it like this, I'm sending a lot of information to my brain of how I want my elbow, cap, my elbow joint to move. That's the difference. So the slower the car, or the, for the longer period of time, the more information you transfer to your brain. So these are the, this is the way to do it. Um, this is the way to, these are the different techniques we can do to pass on that information. Um, don't worry about manual feed, by feedback. What we're gonna do is rotation of path, which is the cars. That's the one you guys have been doing forever. Uh, ISO ramping, which is pretty much going into a lengthened position and just performing an isometric in that position, just like I'm doing now. Um, and kin stretch, we also don't use that. That's not the whole other certification system for the, into the, the FRS people. Input one. Yeah, that's space creation. Every single movement, since it starts on the joint, that's the first constraint. So if your joints don't have enough space to recruit tissues, you won't recruit tissues. If you only have access to 40% of your shoulder, you're only gonna use 40% of your shoulder during the shoulder press. If you only have access to 40% of your hips, you're only gonna use 40% of your hips during the squat. Which is why I say the focus should be on getting better hips as opposed to getting better squats. Because the more you use your hips, the more, you, the more tissues you're gonna have available to squat with. Um, so we're going to go over the space creation inputs. You guys know these already, specifically you, Joey, because you took FRC. This is, this is FRC 101. This is pretty much where FRC ties into this entire model. Um, Pales and rails, max effort. Uh, this stretch actually doesn't have to be two minutes. I just give you guys two-minute stretches because whenever you do have two minutes of stretching, you release collagen in the area, and that's how you build connective tissue. So it kind of kills two birds with one stone. Sometimes I'll give you just the workspace. Sometimes I'm going to give you both. It depends on what the, the goal for the program is. Um, Max effort, always. Where unless you're doing uh, pales and rails for rehab, which is because you're injured, you're going max effort. You're going up to 100%. And you ramp it up. You don't go from 0 to 100. You go 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 in the span of whatever time I give you. Most of the time, it's going to be in between 4 and 8 seconds. I'm, I doubt that I'll give you guys anything more than that from now on this. So yeah. except for the seconds, it's pretty much what we've been doing. Uh, for, in, for space creation, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's input 1 out of 7. Because okay. there are seven layers to the, the how your body sees itself. Okay. Uh, connective tissue inputs. There's two. Inputs two and three. Input one is training at length. No, input, sorry, input two is training at length. And input three is training to length. Input two adds more connective tissue architecture that you, to, your whole, to your whole connective tissue. It's pretty much adding, it's kind of like adding muscle to your connective tissue. Input three, which is the one that increases that, that strain at two lengths, it increases the bar load bearing capacity of that connective tissue. So one adds more, and one increases the capacity of it to bear load, which makes, pretty much makes it stronger. Um, training at length, I'm gonna get another example of my bicep curl. At length is over here at the bottom. I do isometric contractions over here. I'm training connective tissue, I'm creating more connective tissue. Obviously, after a two minute stretch, that's what pairs and rails are after two minutes stretches to create more connective tissue. Training two length is me getting a dumbbell and slowly going into an eccentric. I'm increasing the load bearing capacity of my connective tissue. You can do the same thing with speed. You can get something very, very heavy, catch it at the bottom. That would improve the, the ability of my connective tissue to bear, uh, to bear load at high speeds and slow. Yeah, input two, connective tissue architecture. Over two minutes stretch to release collagen, not under, as opposed to workspace. 
Uh, and then it, the, the intensity in this case is case dependent because I may have you guys do very quick isometric contractions or I may have you guys do very long ones like 30 seconds, 15, like the, the regular 30, 15 split that we have always done. It depends. It's going to depend on case by case for each one of you. It depends on what each one of you needs. Um, yeah, cool. The path for creating that is usually uh, FR is manual therapy. I don't do manual therapy because I'm not a manual therapist. I would love to be, but um, we're not going to do that. I did, however, learn how to palpate. So I can, I can tell, I learned how to palpate for malfunctioning connective tissue. So I can tell whenever uh, there's, this, there, there's a certain type of disorder in your connective tissue lining, and I know how to correct that now too. What does palpate mean? Palpate, uh, come here. Give me your elbow, give me your hand. Go into full extension, relax. Relax, 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 relax. Palpation is this, is you feeling for the tissue. So I'll start from here and I'll pull you into full tension and I'm feeling for the length, length tension relationship of your muscles. That's pretty much what it is. It's just using my hands to tell me information about your body. Yeah. Uh, again, isoramping, you can use that for building connective tissue too. That's usually, again, a very early stage of rehab. We're probably not gonna use it very much unless one of you gets injured, which I doubt that'll happen. Um, <clears throat> Uh, passive range stretching, zone exploration, uh, this pretty much fails, uh, and rails both, and then ENGs, you guys remember ENGs, I didn't give you guys a lot of ENGs, yes. yeah, you know what it is because you took the seminar, but ENGs is when you move eccentrically into something, um, with the popular one that I gave you guys was the 99 eccentrics, you guys held the, 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 like a plate here on your, on your chest and you kind of moved into external rotation or internal rotation, That's, yeah, you've, you've been giving me this, yeah, uh, I, I, I give it mostly during prep just to maintain connective tissue because I need, we need a little bit of red-white balance. Red tissue, by the way, when I say red-white, red is muscle, white is connective tissue. Uh, number three, which is increasing the load-bearing capacity. This one is very, very, very fun to do because it's like high speed, it looks, it looks pretty athletic type deal. Uh, you guys, people would think that powerlifters don't need a lot of it. I'm still going to include a little bit because when you do, for example, if you drop down in the squat, that's still high speed. You're still absorbing a lot of force at a pretty decent velocity there. So I'm still going to include, specifically for your legs, I doubt that it'll, and maybe your, uh, the, the, your shoulders and your, and your elbows. But for example, for spine, I probably wouldn't include it very much just because you guys, powerlifting, you really need that to, you know, you really use dynamic effort in your spine. It's pretty much just a metric we tracking the whole time. Uh, but what the only variable that we're going to manipulate here is uh, how much. The, the, the velocity of it, how, how speed it goes. It goes from low speed to high speed. So you guys are going to see here, for example, it goes from isoramping, which is the very the static one, just the, 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 the contraction here, to pails and rails, to ballistic pails and rails, which for example, for external rotation would be one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. It's very quick pails and rails. Oh, now, so pulses. No, that's, that's different. Pulses are, yeah, pulses are pretty much, they're, they're different. It's reinforced development. We're going to get there. That's input five. Uh, quicker EMGs, EQYs, you guys have seen me do this. Uh, I posted this on my Instagram the other day. What? <laughs> like the, I think, never mind. What happened to you? No, I just made me think of the picture of the guy, like, you're doing something. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> John Quinn, yeah, yeah. Uh, so EQYs, you guys, I, I posted it on my Instagram the other day. I, put, I, get, I got two bands and I pulled it back into a ladder raise and I just failed eccentrically in all the ranges of motion until I got here. It took like, I, I sped up the video because it took like a minute and 40 minutes, I mean a minute and 41 seconds. Uh, but pretty much you're failing through all these ranges. EQI stands for eccentric quasi-isometric. So you're trying to maintain an isometric contraction, but the weight is so high that it's pulling you into an eccentric. So you're failing through all these, and that's increasing the load bearing capacity of all these tissues. Uh, you can call it dynamic isometric, so it's the same shit. Uh, over speed eccentrics, which is the one that I talked about earlier, you can drop something, catch at the bottom. That's very quick uh, eccentric contraction. Again, training to length. Uh, and then positional isometrics is uh, that's different. That's pretty much when you find a range of motion that you use in your sport a lot. Let's say, for example, the bottom of a squat, and I do contracting pulses into it. Let's say, for example, I'm at the bottom and I put uh, the, the pins over the bar. Almost like an like overcoming isometric, but quick. Muscular inputs, the ones that everybody loves, because we like to build muscle. And before, fast switch, not to failure. This is RDF, or R oh, sorry, RFD, rate of force development training. Uh, this is what everybody means when they say they want to get faster. It's the ability of your nervous system to, to use your muscles to make you faster. All right, 
There you go. Ready the fourth step element? Um, practice the stuff that you already did. That's important to understand that you're not adding shit. You're not building muscle. You're just improving the efficiency of your brain to use your muscle. That's it. That's the important part to understand that. Um, always not to failure. That's very important too. Never. If I ever give you input uh, four, never take it to failure. Yeah. It's always until you lose speed. Uh, but it is max effort. That's very important. So not, I don't want you guys to like, fuck this, fuck the now. Intensity, put intensity into it. You guys are gonna see when I do the program, I show you guys the program that I wrote for, wrote for Andres. There's a whole, there's a big um, intensity. I'm gonna put an intensity meter for every single part of the, the training. And uh, that'll kind of tell you guys how much you should be focusing on, like how much intention you should mentally put on it. Uh, ways to get there. Yeah, we would, go, we would do the same thing. We would follow the linear path, uh, just like FRC does. We go from rotational to linear uh, and train the muscles from the outside in, but you can train them, again, in force time, pretty much what that means. Uh, input five, slow twitch not to failure, which is making your slow twitch muscle fibers more efficient. And you're gonna say, Nick, I'm a power lifter. I don't use, I don't use uh, slow twitch muscle fibers. Yeah, you do. Uh, they create the base for every other contraction out there. Uh, they're, they're endurance fibers, but every single person uses them, and if you don't have them, and if you don't train them, they will go underused, and they will vanish, and you will have pains because of it. And having pains is not an optimal thing for powerlifting. So we do train those, although less, we still need to focus a little bit on them sometimes. And you guys are gonna see input five a lot less than the other inputs, I'll take a sandwich. Yeah. Uh, oh, again, bioflow loading, it helps, since, since it's a slow contraction with a slow twitch fiber, uh, it passes a lot of information. So that's another good part about the use that for powerlifting is that you learn how to do things better when you take things slow because there's more information being passed. Let's say, for example, I might give you guys um, two minute cars, a set of two minute cars, because just to pass information to your brain about, hey, joint, I'm here, learn how to use me, tech field. Uh, usually it's less, or sorry, greater than 40 second sets. Again, not to failure. It can be cars, it can be linear movements, it doesn't really matter. It depends on what the goal of the, the exercise is. Very unlikely that the goal will be, uh, very unlikely that it will not be cars just because I really want to focus on the passing of information. I'll probably use that in the workspace in there, one of those. Let's see what it is. Welcome to hypertrophy. This is where most people's training is. Fast switch to failure. That's adding muscle. Fast switch. Fast switch muscle is the one that's more hypertrophic. It's meaning that's the one that grows the fastest. Look at endurance runners, they're small, tiny, puny. Look at sprinters, they're gonna have big boulder shoulders, strong muscles, they look like they're gonna, they're gonna fucking rip their clothes out. Um, that's why, because fast switch muscle fibers, they grow quicker and bigger. Uh, two inputs here. These are the maxims for it. If you train for max strength, I literally just posted a video about that yesterday. Max strength, 12 to 24 seconds. Max hypertrophy, 32 seconds to one minute. Um, and then there's also slow twitch. Anything beyond one minute is slow twitch fibers, which is not part of this input. Uh, again, max effort to failure. If I tell you to failure, it's absolute failure. If you want examples, look at my Instagram story currently. That's what I did yesterday three times, because Andres loves programming for me. Uh, Ways to do that, linear path, Joey, you learned this, FRC, same thing. You're just applying it differently, you're applying it to your muscles. Uh, continuous tension sets, which is exactly what I did yesterday. So for example, the way they teach, teach us there is through the zone training. So bicep curl, it's not enough to do here. That's what you've been doing a lot of. Instead of doing bicep curl just in one line, you're doing it in multiple lines and you're failing all of them. So let's say you start here at the very end of elbow flexion, you fail all of these, once you fail them, move into zone two, fail all of these, move into zone three, fail all of these. That way you target every freaking fiber that your elbow has access to. Notice the word elbow, not bicep. You're training your elbow, very important. Uh, kinetic stretching pretty much means that you're going into stretch positions by contracting your regressive tissue. So, if I'm squatting down, the kinetic stretch that's happening is me, I'm forcing my quads and my hip flexors to contract. I'm literally pulling myself down to the floor through my hip flexors as opposed to just letting me sink. 
It's it's more in, it's a it's a stretch with more intensity with, with with a certain intent behind it of making the angles that are closing contract. The case of the skull will be your hip flexors and your your ankles. Uh, cars level three. It's pretty much loaded cars. Those also you can take those to failure too, and those are, you build muscle in the rotational muscles around your joints, which we're probably going to do a lot of, by the way, because that's the, the base for your movement. It's a uh, last input, which is slow twitch to failure. Uh, that's adding uh, slow twitch muscle fibers to you. So if, for example, you have some side of sort of dysfunction and you can't, let's say, for example, you have a lot of back pain, it could be that you don't have enough slow twitch fibers to sustain you for a whole day. So you have to build more, so they make them more efficient, you can be able to sustain them. Um, these, again, we're not going to use very much because I, my assumption is that since all you guys are decently high level power lifters, you guys all have enough of these. Uh, unless there's a certain area that I think of your body that I think could benefit from it, uh, but unlikely. Yeah. That's the last input. So that's the internal strength model. That's the whole thing. Now, uh, oh, uh, oh yeah, slow twitch to failure, it has to be above one minute. Every time you're thinking of, of slow twitch, above one minute. Every time you see above one minute, we're training slow twitch. Okay. Uh, same thing as the other one, just slow. Cool. Program. This is the program that I wrote on dress three days after the seminar, and this is the program that they're using to that I'm using to train him for his powerlifting competition, July 25th in Miami. He's doing Paradise with Tito. They're both going to run internal strength for it. I didn't tell them the difference between regular and internal strength. Tito's going to understand because Tito's a chiropractor. Andres obviously is going to understand because he went to the seminar with me. But it's I'm not telling the, him them all of this that I'm telling you guys. So uh, for them, it's going to be more natural, if you say. But this is what the program looks like. And whereas in before, I used to just spread for the cars three sets of everything. I'm going to give you an intensity meter and an intent meter. An intensity meaning how hard you should be going on them. And an intent meaning what's the goal of giving you guys this in the first place. Just so you guys are conscious of what we're trying to do here. If you guys understand why you're doing something, you're going to be way more likely that you're going to be able to achieve that. That's the whole point of you guys being here right now. Uh, second part. Probably has some sort of isometric training, which could be pills and rails, it could be iso ramping, it could be anything that affects your joint capsule. Joint capsule is going to be always going to be connected tissue based and workspace based because you guys always need more workspace. You guys always need more workspace, all of you, because the more tissues you have access to, the more tissues you have access to during your lifts. The more tissues you have access to in your lifts, the more you can lift, which is the goal of powerlifting. So very, very unlikely that I'll say you guys are done working workspace. Unless you guys turn into like contortionists. <laughs> yeah. So would creating more workspace and like you have more fibers used to mitigate the chance of injuries? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The injuries happen whenever you put too much stress or too much load in one specific range of motion. So let's say for example, I'm again using the example of the bicep. If I put, if maybe I can handle 100 pounds here, but not here, and somehow 100 pounds falls, falls directly into my hand while I'm in this position, the ball's gone. So the more ranges of motion you have access to, and the stronger they are, the less chance you have injury. Mm -hmm. And also you gotta count speed into that too. So if maybe they have enough strength, but they don't have enough strength in velocity, they'll also get injured. Yeah. Which is why, for example, for quarterbacks, you wanna train a lot of speed, rotational speed in the, in the shoulder, a lot. Because they're using that shit like fucking what, like 300 times a week, or maybe more, a lot more than that. So yeah, some type of, probably some type of isometric training specifically for your joint capsule. Remember, workspace, capsule, that's the order. Second part, workspace, upload the information. Train the, the communication between your capsule and the other tissues. Probably some sort of level two cars, uh, probably wall blocked, sidelining, loaded, anything that makes the cars a little bit harder. Again, 50% intensity, just to upload information. More cars, but here's the trick. This cars is, I believe this was input, this was input, was it six? This was input six, yes. Um, which is to add to, to give Andres more fast twitch muscle fibers in the rotational muscles of his hips. Andres was a bodybuilder, so he has like very little slow twitch fiber, or fast twitch fibers, and then he, he's just very slow twitch biased person. You can tell 
just by like touching his muscles and like you can tell like visually speaking too. Oh my god. He took steroids. <laughs> he did take yeah, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Uh, so he, he's not very, he doesn't have a lot of fast twitch muscle fibers is the point of this entire thing. So most of his training is going to be focused on giving him more fast twitch fibers so then that later in prep, he's currently 14 weeks out, around 8 weeks out I'm going to switch the focus from adding shit to making shit better. I'm going to get all those fast twitch fibers that we've been building for the past few weeks and I'm going to train the ability of them to get better at powerlifting, make them faster. So I did use cards for this but I made it banded. I made it IR or I made it ER uh, based so that he can train specifically. He's moving into external rotation at the hip over here using his knee um, and performing them seated in a sumo position to make it as sport specific as possible. So he's adding a lot of tissues in specifically in that sumo position. Uh, intensity, failure, max effort, 100% until you fail. If you don't fail below a minute, go again. Fail below a minute. Until you learn what weight you need, what resist, how much resistance you need to fail below a minute. Again, this is with a band, so we had to take a little bit of like. There's no like quantifiable like poundage that we can use. Uh, intent: fail, fail fast twitch muscle fibers in hip ER and abduction. Uh, that was the rotation of the input, by the way. That was part number four of the entire sequence. So wait, for that specific drills. Where would he be, where would it be banded? On his leg, like over here, on his ankle. Yeah, okay. His ankle attached to something and he's going like this. Okay, so it doesn't matter like where is it's attached. So As in like where in the gym? No, like for example, like in front of you or... Um, as long as you can, as long as you go into external rotation, I don't care. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, second part, it's, that's the second to last workspace input. Okay, workspace capsule, workspace rotational, workspace. That's the workspace. Intensity a little bit higher. I put at him 70 to 80%. And I told him to do it loaded. Um, he has ankle weights. So he can get them loaded with ankle weights. Uh, if you guys want to get them, be my guest. That would improve the quality of your training. Uh, if not, we'll find a way. I'm probably getting myself some monkey feet for this gym. Which is the that's when you attach a dumbbell to the bottom of your foot over here, just so you can load your lower body for cars and stuff like that. Um, uploading the, the goal of this is upload information and improve the efficiency of this fast twitch muscle fibers just because of the timing. It's one minute, and we're, we're pretty much taking the rotational fibers not to fit the fibers that he just built. Obviously, he didn't build them yet, but he will over time. Uh, then we go into linear, which is the linear practice, and I actually gave him sumo deadlifts here. I could have given him leg extensions, I could have given him uh, liftoffs for, uh, for hip flexion, anything that is a linear movement that is not rotational. It could be a bicep curl, it could be anything that, that you guys would see the traditional exercises, those are usually linear. Okay? Uh, I just chose to give him the, the sumo deadlift here. The goal was max strength development of the linear tissues involved in sumo deadlifting. Very simple. Because deadlifting, sumo deadlifting is a linear movement, so whenever you practice it, you build linear tissue. Mm -hmm. uh, I gave him a 5 rep max uh, with two second pause. My estimation was that the 5 rep max would be a, it would take around 30 seconds to, for him to complete the set, maybe a little bit more, maybe 30 to 40, which is like it falls exactly into the max effort range of strength building and muscle or sorry, of hypertrophy building to build tissues in those areas. So for me, it checked out. Uh, we'll see how it works. Last workspace input, again, back to 50%, taking it easy, just upload the information of the entire workout um, to your brain, to your nervous system. And then move and practice. I gave him some floor presses, and I gave him some gorilla rows and some leg extensions, just for some. To be honest, these I gave him for more for cardiac output, and it just parallel and practice. Practice pushing, pulling, and then um, some more hypertrophy squats with the traditional model, and that's pretty much what the program is going to look like. The important, things that I want you, the important thing of the whole program that I want you guys to understand, let's just see if there's anything else. No, that's it. The important thing of the whole program that I want you guys to understand, the work is going to be mostly consistent of that flow, of the uh, workspace capsule, workspace traditional, workspace linear, workspace. Then movement. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's where most of the work happens. It's going to feel weird because it's like, holy fuck, like, is all my training here now? It's like, Yes, because these are the inputs that we need to change your biology in that whole flow that we have so that this biology can then come here into your powerlifting training and change your powerlifting training for you. The important thing for us to understand, for us to keep doing progress is there's something called accommodation. 
accommodation is your body's ability to accommodate your stimuli, meaning it gets better at doing the same thing. So 100 pounds on day one is going to feel a lot harder than 100 pounds on day 90, because by the time you get to day 90, 100 pounds feels easy. That's accommodation, it's the ability of your body to adapt. Historically, Westside Barbell has, used, has prevented accommodation by cycling exercises. Mm -hmm. We changed that. As opposed to get, bringing new exercises to the lifter, we bring a new lifter to the exercises. By changing the tissues that you use to perform the exercises. That way you continue progress, you avoid the accommodation, the law of accommodation. Which accommodation is lack of progress? That's how you keep progress. Avoiding accommodation is how you keep progress in the gym. Which what Westside Barbell did works. It's just that this works better because it doesn't take it doesn't have to take away from the movement practice. Where I, what I try to say is that you guys are gonna be powerlifting a shit ton. Yeah. It's gonna be flow, change biology, practice powerlifting. Change biology, practice powerlifting. Some days this biology training is gonna be like this, and your powerlifting is gonna be like this. You're gonna do powerlift a lot. Some days it's gonna be like this, your flow, and you guys are gonna do one powerlifting movement. It depends. The whole goal of this entire system is to make so that you can change, spend as least time as possible changing biology and as most time as possible practicing your sport. Most people would say you can use powerlifting to change your biology. I disagree completely because the inputs that you get through the lifts are not specific enough to change the things in your biology. How the fuck are you going to train the, 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 the connective tissue of your rotational muscle fibers around your elbow joint with a bench press? You're not. It's not specific enough. You can't do that. So you need these specific inputs so then you can actually plug them into powerlifting. But, again, the whole goal is to minimize this because th this whole model was created for more traditional sports, for powerlifting, for, for, um, for football, for baseball, for fucking golf. Uh, I'm treating powerlifting like every other sport. The only difference is that the object that we're moving is very heavy, meaning it's very close to the mass of strength that you can produce, meaning you can see quicker. But it's just like any other sport. You're still moving an object. Instead, instead of a football, it's a barbell. It's just a heavier object. So we're going to train more max effort stuff because that's how you need it. I'm literally treating it as a sport, meaning you guys will be practicing it a lot. Okay, so you guys will be powerlifting a shit ton, which is going to be fun. If you, guys are not, if you like powerlifting, this is for you. If you like variety, this is not for you. I think that's it. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Cool. So what we're going to do now, right guys? Who, who's, so after hearing all this out, is everybody in? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. So here's what's going to happen now then. Uh, let, me, let me explain to you guys the entire, uh, I made like a whole timeline for how we're going to do. This is all going to be like a massive YouTube video, by the way, because if we're running a, six, a 16 week program uh, using internal strength, we're going to get your maxes a week, a week before we start. Uh, and then we're going to compare it to your max at the end of the entire 16 weeks. Okay. And so, and don't, I know what you're thinking, don't worry about Tennessee, I counted that into what? Tennessee. I counted that into the whole okay. thing, okay? Um, so the way it's gonna work for you guys, you guys have a meeting here today. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go up to Titan, whenever we're finished, and you're gonna tell him your, age, your name, your age, your, your powerlifting numbers, how long you've been lifting for, and your body weight, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and then the second thing you're going to do is I want an assessment with each and every single one of you here in person in the next few weeks um, just because I want to be able to, I want to palpate some parts of some of you uh, as well as I want to do some movement assessments. And so please schedule that with me because I'm busy and I need you guys to help me. Um, next part will be uh, I'm going to build programs for you guys. Start of program is April 10th. Okay, that's when we start, that's week one on the 16th. End of program is July 23rd, that's a Sunday. We're gonna have a mock meet, all, to, all of us together that Sunday. Ideally, I'd like to use prime time. If you guys can make that happen for me, oh, that'd be great. 23rd, July. 23rd, July, yes. Uh, and the objective measurement of how well this program works will be how much you increase your lifts. Uh, I might also be adding some uh, work capacity work for, for you guys uh, from cardio depending on how far behind you are on that, on that front. Uh, yeah, the ones of you that don't have meets coming up, which are, is just you. <laughs> you two compete and you two compete. Mm -hmm. You're gonna max out before you start this too, because I want your new numbers, okay? You're gonna have mock meet, okay? Right. And you two and you two, you guys are just gonna use your meet numbers, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, I'm also gonna ask you guys to send me videos of all those maxes, 
whenever you guys hit them. Mm -hmm. Film them horizontal and send them to me or Tyler. And then Wait, we're so gonna we're not them. like saying our maxes today? You're saying your current maxes and then you, uh, up, you're you going to update them after when you send, okay. when you, after your competition. Should I use my max like bench like after? Like, As, you're, you're, yes. Okay. Yes. Definitely. Because it's very different. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, so that's it. Uh, yeah. Get ready for April 10th. Yeah. So. Whenever Titan is good, just go ahead on the camera, hold this microphone and tell them. Let me, let me see. I think I'm just going to put it on my camera. Okay.